Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're gonna to talk about the AIOC cable. This is the all-in-one cable from Simon, and we sell these over on the Coffee and Ham Radios website, which you can see right over there. They are currently sold out, but we are gonna get another batch of about 100 in here any minute now, because that's the way the mail works, and we will definitely put these back up. But I wanted to get this information out because the people who just bought theirs should be getting them any day now and would like to share with them what it is that they got and how to use it. So let's get right to it. The AIOC board has a K connector on one side of it and a USB-C connector on the other side. It's got some blinking lights and an STM32 chip. What this means to you is it shows up as a serial port for programming your radio or an audio device for doing things like APRS or WinLink or et cetera, et cetera, on a device that uses the K connectors. If you decide you don't wanna do K connectors, you can figure out the pads here and here for audio in, audio out, and ground, and do whatever you'd like to do with it. It's a pretty slick little device. So, now that I've got this thing here, let me get the world's best radio, the Baofeng UB5R. And you wanna take this and put it into the radio and make sure that it's fully seated all the way in. That's like the number one problem with programming these radios is people don't have their cable seated all the way in. Take your USB-C cable and plug that into the USB-C socket for this thing and then turn your radio on. And we've done all the things that you need to do in order to be physically ready to use this thing. Tip number one is going to be programming the radio with Chirp. So let's get into Chirp. For this part, we're gonna assume you already know what Chirp is and what, what it's good for and some of the basics of it. But I'm gonna to go to radio, I'm gonna choose download from radio, and I'm gonna have some options for ports here. And I'm gonna pick this all in one cable, AIOC. This might show up as tiny USB or something depending on which version of the firmware you have, but sit tight because we'll get into firmware updates just after this. I'm gonna pick all in one cable. This is indeed a Baofeng radio and it is a UV5R3, but UV5R is good enough to get the job done. I'm gonna hit okay. And it's going to give me some instructions. Turn the radio off. We already did that. Turn it on. Connect the cable. Make sure it's fully inserted. Make sure the volume's all the way up. Make sure you're on a clear frequency. And I am not. Let's go to a clear frequency, the, the national calling frequency, which no one uses around here. I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to start downloading from the radio. All right, we are downloading, and the screen changed color. That might not be so visible, but the flashing lights, the blinking lights are doing the blinking thing and we are good to go. All right, the radio has popped up with all of my repeaters and everything programmed in, ready to roll. I'm gonna to go to settings. I'm gonna make a real simple change just to kind of prove that it works. And we're gonna see, where is it? Other settings, it says KM9G's radio. I'm gonna change this to say UV-5RME and I'm gonna say KM9G underneath. Okay, so now we've made some changes and uploading to the radio is exactly what you would think it is. Upload to radio. Pick the all-in-one cable, hit OK. It's gonna give you that same instructional message that it gave you the last time, so I'm gonna say OK. And you can see that the light is blinking there, and the light is blinking there, and she's programming away. All right, and we're done programming, and the radio will reboot itself. And it says UV5 Army KM9G. We are good to go. So Chirp works, that's tip number one, done. Tip number two is a firmware upgrade. Go to our web browser and let's go to the GitHub page. There will be links for all of this stuff as well as instructions and whatnot down in the video below. So just kind of watch and from a high level see what's going on. And I want to download the latest release. You'll see it over here on the right hand side under releases. And 1.2.0 from March 19th is the newest. And then we'll scroll down. And what changes do we have? We have CM108 style PTT, that's pretty interesting. If you don't know what that means, it just means that it's really easy to push to talk on this thing now. Live automatic DFU firmware updates. I don't know what that is, but we have to get the firmware on first before we can do the live firmware updates second. So we'll see that. And then the serial port has changed and just keep that in mind when you're ready to do serial port type stuff. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna do CM108 style PTT in the future of this video. So stay tuned for that. I need to download the firmware file and I'm gonna save it into my downloads folder so I know where I put it. And then we will go back to our command line. Now we have the firmware downloaded, we have to go into the downloads folder and we have to install the dfutil, sudo apt install dfu util. And in my case, it's going to say that it is already the newest version, which means it's already installed and ready to roll there. So I don't have to worry about anything on that 
front. Okay, for the firmware programming, unplug the AIOC card from your radio and you need to find some way of shorting some pins in the pin header. Pin header is this little part here next to the USB-C port. And what I have is an old solder leg from a project that I worked on before. And so I will take that and I will put it in the outermost hole and the other outermost hole like so. And that should be enough to get you connected. When you plug in your USB cable, there will be no lights on the USB cable and it is ready for firmware programming mode. So if we go back to the website, you will see the command line here, dfutil-a0-s memory address dash D. Okay, so let's copy that and we'll switch back over to our terminal. We'll be in our downloads folder where we downloaded the file. And I wanna paste that in. And then I wanna type in the file name and we're in firmware upload mode, so let's go. And she's writing. There will be no lights on the adapter here, but you will see progress on the screen. And when it's done, it says it's successful. So unplug the power, unplug the short, and then you can plug the power back in. All right, and that is how you do the firmware update. Let's take a look at tip number three, three, which is going to be how to get this thing onto APRS. So I'm gonna plug this back into my radio, turn my radio on, I'm gonna set the volume about halfway. I'm gonna program in 144390 as the US APRS frequency. I'm gonna go into my menu I'm gonna set squelch to zero. I'm gonna let Direwolf figure out squelch. And then we will leave the radio B for now. We need to change some permissions on the file. So I need to do sudo change root audio slash dev slash hid raw one. Everything in Linux is a file on disk somewhere. It's just the way that the operating system works. In this case, the AIOC cable shows up as an hid human interface device in raw mode and it's device number one under the dev tree, yay but we need to make sure that we have the right permissions on it. So that is group ownership of audio, which is how we change it here. Then we're gonna do change permissions for the group, sudo chmod, change mode, to g plus rw slash dev slash hid raw one. That's gonna allow your user in that group to read and write from this device. And again, all these commands will be in the description down below. I'm just giving you a nice, pretty walkthrough on the screen. All right, the next thing we need to do is put our user in the audio group, sudo add user dollar user to audio. And I'm already a member of audio. If you're not, you won't see this message. You'll just be successfully added. At this point, if you know what you're doing, make yourself actively a member of the group. If you're new to all of this, just reboot the computer. You'll be fine. The reason why is you have to log out completely and then log back in as that user to activate the group. And if you don't do that, if you just log out of your command shell here, that's not the user that you logged into the computer with, so that's not the active group that you're in. Next up, we need to figure out where this audio device is. A record L will give us a list of all of the audio devices on the computer. Now let's scroll up to the beginning here. We are card one is the all-in-one cable, device zero. So we're looking for card one, device zero. Fantastic. Use your favorite text editor. Mine is Joe. Joe direwolf.com. We're gonna go all the way up to the beginning. And there's a couple of settings in here we need to set. It's easier just to search for them. So I'm gonna hit the search key in my editor and I'm gonna search for a device. And a device, those numbers that we talked about earlier, card one, device zero. Here we go, plug hw, colon one, comma zero. So that's card one, device zero. And then a rate, the audio rate, the audio bit rate is 48,000, 48,000 bits per second. So if that's not in your system, you can just add it right after the A device. And for me, it wasn't in, I had to add this. Next, I wanna do my call. So I'm gonna search for my call and I wanna set on the one where that begins with the word my call, where the line begins with the word my call. I wanna set my call sign to KM9G. And then I wanna do PTT. And I wanna do PTT CM108 slash dev slash HID raw one. And there we have it on the screen for you. So when we save and exit this, I'm gonna run Direwolf itself. And the first thing it's gonna give me is this warning message. This is where it gets interesting. The CM108 support built into the AIOC card is newer than Direwolf. So Direwolf doesn't know that it exists. But as you can see, I'm already getting APRS packets coming in. And this first one complained that my audio level was too high. So I'm gonna turn my audio level down just a skosh there and we're gonna wait for the next packet to come in. Somebody's got an FTM 400 DR on a truck. This is an error message for the packet sender, not for me. 
But my volume looks pretty good now that we've got that set up properly. And that's what this little thing here is. This is a volume indicator device. And you can only do what you can do because some of that is dependent upon the signal received by your radio. But you want to have it somewhere where you've got these vertical bars in the middle of these underscores. ASCII art, am I right? Okay, so we have data coming in. Can we get data to go out? I'm gonna use my favorite tools here. These are real simple tools. There's tons of tools to do this with. This is called KissUtil, and KissUtil just acts like a, a message box. So when you run it, you give it the inbox folder and the outbox folder, and Y-O for inbox, O outbox, I inbox, I don't know, and Y-F outbox, F folder, F file, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We just need to, to speak the language that the device speaks. So I'm gonna run that, and the next APRS packet that comes in should show up on the screen, but it's running. Otherwise it would be complaining. If I go back to the direwolf window, it says we've attached a KISS TCP client, which we have. Great. Now I'm going to go over to another terminal window and I have a sample APRS text message that I want to send. And this is just to prove that it works. So from KM9G, where it's going, what the path info is, wide 11, wide 21, all of this stuff is APRS specific type stuff latitude and longitude in the format that it expects. And then I'm gonna send the message CQTO. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Use your favorite APRS client. This is just an example to prove that it does APRS type stuff. I'm gonna copy the APRS.txt file to the outbox. Copying this file to the outbox means that KissUtil is gonna see it and then send it over to Direwolf and then Direwolf is gonna see it and send it out of the radio. I'm gonna hit enter and we're gonna watch the radio. We're gonna see if it's gonna blink here. And we're red for TX, and we went into TX mode. Let's do it one more time and see if we get a blink here. And we are red for transmit. Let's look at Direwolf and see what Direwolf says. And we've got a failure message here, but I'm not sure that it failed in a way that I care about because the radio did go into transmit mode. And let me grab another radio real quick and see what we can do about hearing that signal. So back to my... EDC radio kit, and I need another two meter radio, and I need an antenna for a two meter radio. Okay, so I just sent that message, APRS message from this radio, and this radio received it, and it is up here on the screen. Okay, now can we get it to go the opposite direction? Let's go back over here, and let's copy. And we heard it on the BTEC from the Baofang. Fantastic. Everything is working. I love it. Again, if you would like to get this cable, stay tuned on coffeeandhamradios.com website or stay tuned to the Coffee and Ham Radio show or over on the Toads Discord. Link for that in the description down below as well. And we will make announcements when these are back in stock and ready to ship. But I just wanted to show some people how these things worked and get this information in your hands as quickly as I possibly could. There is a video right over here. Oh, I did it right. There's a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.